People talk a lot about climate warming gases, and for good reason. But what if I told you that there's a gas out there that's cooling the planet? A gas that comes naturally from creatures in the ocean, causes clouds to form, and could even be a sign of life on other planets. This is dimethyl sulfide, or DMS, a unique and notably stinky molecule that has been dubbed by some as the anti-greenhouse gas. But how exactly does it cool the planet? And could it actually prevent some of the worst case scenarios of climate change? This is the climate cooling gas that nobody's talking about. First of all, what even is DMS? This molecule, made up of two methyl groups bonded to a sulfur atom, is probably one of the first things you smell when you step onto the beach. It's a natural byproduct that comes from the metabolism of phytoplankton, which are microscopic algae that grow in the ocean. DMS is also super volatile, meaning it doesn't stick around in the seawater, but instead vaporizes into the atmosphere. Due to the sheer size of the ocean and the insane number of phytoplankton living in it, this adds up to around 17 megatons of sulfur emissions every single year, over half of all natural sulfur emissions. But what's even more interesting is what happens to the sulfur once it's in the air. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button to support the channel and climate science on YouTube. Once DMS leaves the ocean and gets into the atmosphere, the methyl groups drop off and it becomes a new molecule, sulfate. And for longtime viewers of the channel, you might already know where this is going. The sulfate coming from DMS acts as cloud condensation nuclei, or little particles that allow clouds to form. Typically, these are things like dust or salty sea spray, but sulfate particles work just as well. This causes bigger, fluffier clouds to form over the ocean, which help reflect more sunlight back into space and keep the temperature cooler. And this cooling isn't just a little rounding error on our beach thermometers. The amount of cooling coming directly from DMS and the clouds formed by it is about the same magnitude of the warming coming from all our carbon emissions. Essentially, if this DMS disappeared tomorrow, we'd be about 3 degrees C above our pre-industrial temperatures. It's honestly pretty crazy that something as tiny as phytoplankton have the power to cool Earth as much as all our fossil fuels combined are warming it. And just to clarify, that doesn't mean our emissions don't matter. The DMS was a natural part of our climate long before your great-grandpa evolved out of the primordial soup. And speaking of primordial soup, DMS might actually be a clue to life outside our solar system. Earlier this year, astronomers at Cambridge made headlines using the James Webb Space Telescope to potentially detect DMS in the atmosphere of a distant planet. This planet, with the catchy name K218b, is hypothesized to be an ocean world just within the habitable zone of its star where it's warm enough for liquid water to exist. Since we don't know any way that DMS can form naturally besides from plankton, seeing this in another planet's atmosphere might just be evidence of life. The jury is still out on whether or not this detection is real, as the data isn't very robust yet, but there is a chance that there are other ocean planets in our galaxy with their very own stinky cloud-forming plankton. People have also proposed some pretty wild hypotheses about DMS in our planetary history. A group of scientists in the 1980s proposed that maybe, just maybe, these plankton and their DMS clouds could be conspiring to keep the climate stable. This idea, known as the claw hypothesis, argues that Earth's plankton have the power to adjust the temperature of the planet closer to where they want it. This is one part of the much broader Gaia hypothesis, which argues that microorganisms on Earth are subconsciously working together to keep Earth's climate stable. While it may or may not be true, or even provable, it's a crazy thought experiment that paints Earth's biosphere with emergent properties of collective intelligence that go beyond what we can comprehend. But what do you think about this idea? Leave a comment down below if you think this could be real or not, or if you want to see a whole video about it. But let's take things back to climate change. The main question puzzling researchers now is how will a warmer climate change DMS levels? Will it make DMS increase, meaning more clouds and slowing the rate of warming? Or will it make DMS decrease, meaning fewer clouds and faster warming? Well, one joint study from 2024 between researchers in China and the US predicted that DMS will decrease under a warmer climate. Using models trained on 88,000 DMS measurements, they found that as CO2 concentrations rise, DMS is expected to fall, which doesn't bode well for a future climate. If this is true, then we could see even more rapid warming over the next few decades, as plankton communities change and less clouds form over the coastline. But another study from 2025 between researchers in India, Europe, and Canada found that DMS in the seawater may decrease, but DMS in the air will increase. 
The model used for this paper was trained on over 800,000 DMS data points and could potentially disprove the claims made from the previous paper. And not to be biased, but I hope they're right, as a future with more DMS means more time for nature to adapt to a warmer climate. Whether this paper is correct or not could mean the difference between certain countries going underwater, species going extinct, or planetary tipping points being crossed. While we may know more about DMS today than ever before, we are still entirely unsure of how it will change under a warmer climate. Will warmer oceans cause plankton to make more DMS, or will DMS levels drop as the planet heats up? The answer to this question is still up for debate, which is not comforting considering the massive implications it has on global climate. The only way to get to the bottom of this question is robust, international, collaborative research to not only observe DMS dynamics today, but predict how it will change tomorrow. Maybe then, dimethyl sulfide can finally get the attention it deserves and become the climate cooling gas that everyone is talking about. Thanks for sticking around to the end. As always, all the sources are linked down below. If you learned something from this, enjoyed this, or just want to see more climate science on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to support Planet Zero. I'll see you next time.